That's a blast can me. of whoop ass. <laughs> Open it a can of whoop ass. This podcast is not sponsored by Boss Coffee Ice Long Black Flash Brew. But hey, if Boss Coffee happens to be listening, you can send me some cold brew because that'd be sick. This is the nerdiest uh, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I don't want money. I just want free coffee. Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> I can't course- make you money either. <laughs> You get exactly. nothing out of this. Yeah, you get nothing out of this, but I get free coffee. Uh, if you couldn't tell, my name is Josh Redbeard because I'm addicted to caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Margie, and I am also addicted to caffeine. Here's some honk hero for you. Uh, my name's Grant. I'm also addicted to coffee, but today I've got a beer instead. <laughs> An excellent choice, good sir. Yes. Uh, and as always, you know, uh, after we introduce ourselves, we take you into the nerdiest things we've been doing this week or, you know, just whatever's new and cool in our lives. Um, so on Friday, I was in Tasmania the last day Before of my day. holiday and my flight was delayed for two hours, which was a shame because my best friends, like a lot of my good mates in a band called Vatic, they were playing their first ever headline show. And I was really excited to come down and support them because I knew they had a like elaborate stage show all set up, ready to go. And then last minute, my flight gets pushed forward 20 minutes. So it was delayed an hour, but it got no. pushed forward 20 minutes. Oh. So I managed to get to the airport, at, landed at 10 past nine, got my bags by 9.30, got to the Evelyn by 10.04, though it started two minutes later. So I just <laughs> made the set and That's oh, it, awesome. it was fantastic. So they um they had like CRT TVs all over the stage, all linked up to like run the same graphics that run through the whole set with like lyrics popping up for every song. It all had like um like 35 mil style uh versions of all their music clips like running in the background behind all the lyrics come up like just like honestly would have been hours and hours of work to get did you say this is their first headline show yeah their first headliner my first headline show was in the basement at the gray starling and our drummer didn't have a stool so we played on a beer keg this is a yeah (laughs) different (laughs) they um yeah they definitely they put out they they they're a very hard working band you know they absolutely made sure that they made their headline set stand out and yes well i'm a lazy person (laughs) yeah it's it's the difference between punk rock and metalcore though it's very like like i think muggy like yours is memorable for a very different reason yeah (laughs) it's very punk rock (laughs) (laughs) but yeah like the the, like their new album mercer two seven 17 it's fantastic go check mm. it out uh mm. josh you should sign them right now it's fucking crazy <laughs> uh, di- they also had a fat mix by Damn. joel adams if you're playing in a band and you need a sound guy also hit him up because yeah. he's one of we the love best joel adams shout out Joel. Uh, what about you josh well. what have you been up to this week so it, calling I, people I, nerds josh what the fuck that's so mean um so this is actually a uh, quite a nice contrast to uh where i have been previously because in, like in the last uh, uh, two episodes ago and we did the sort of one has to go movies or books things and i said that i was really struggling to read for like months i've been really really struggling to read and about like i had been stressed out with work and everything like that and a couple of weeks ago i just kind of snapped and just found an airbnb in the middle of nowhere booked it and went away I like, there's no air quotes around it. I accidentally left my laptop at home because I knew that during the week I'd actually have to post the podcast. So I was like, I need to take my laptop just for that. Forgot the podcast, had to walk the housemate through it. Very different thing. But because <laughs> amazing. I didn't even know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because it just it was just so seamless. But because I, I didn't have a laptop, so I had this hard drive with all these movies on it. I was like, oh, I'll bring some books. I'll bring the hard drive, do a bit of both. So I didn't have anything to watch anything on. So I literally just like, fuck it. I'm just going to start reading. And in just over 48 hours, I finished six books and I was like very very proud of that because like I said I was probably six more than I've read in the last three months okay two questions what did you read and did you sleep uh yeah no I I slept plenty like I literally just woke up in the morning that's pretty rare because you usually don't sleep at all (laughs) no no, I was just like I was I was awake at like 6 a.m most mornings but like yeah all three mornings but yeah I would just get up make myself some coffee sit in this really nice chair that had this gorgeous view just out into like farmland and just started to read so I read 
so there's only one comic book. So I read the the Wolver the Frank Miller's Wolverine. Um, so the one was oh, like yeah. him, yeah. him in Japan, which is phenomenal. Uh, yeah. Then I read a book called uh, Essentialism that I'd recommend to every single person. That's why I'm going to link link in the show notes. Go and read a book called Essentialism because it's fucking phenomenal. Um, it's just just all about like you know how like we 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 think so much is important in life and so much is sort of like we give our energy to so much when really it's like 90 percent of life is just bullshit and stuff that we don't need to put energy into so it's about like picking out the like the things what's really important half ass your job so half ass yes. doing your laundry half ass everything unless it's <laughs> Yeah. fun <laughs> exactly exactly uh but i read uh helen razor uh who's a like a political uh writer in australia wrote a book about marxism so i read it's called total propaganda so i read that uh what else did I, i've read the first witcher book the first Witcher book is amazing the last week phenomenal Ugh, so amazing. good so good really really good um I'm forgetting a book in there. Oh, I read it. There's a, 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 an inventor from like the, he, he died in like the eighties. He's amazing ahead of his time guy called Buckminster Fuller. And I could do a whole episode just talking yeah, about how Buckminster amazing. Yeah, Buckminster Fullerene. Bucky there's Fuller a, is amazing yeah, um, human being. We, there's, there's a, there's a chemical compound called Buckminster Fullerene, um, yeah. which is named after him, obviously. And it's a big yeah. circle of carbon rings. Um, yeah. It's really fucking cool. So you should Google that too. <laughs> I, I, I 100% will. But yeah, so I like, I, I mixed it up and uh, I read one more in that Warhammer series as well. So I, I'm up to Yay! book number 43 in that series now. Um, but just as like a slightly, the other thing that I did do is like along the way to this uh, adventure that I was going on, I decided to stop at every small town that was like, even if it wasn't quite on the way, I kind of did like that kind of big hook around and I went to every single op shop that I could find and bought a whole bunch of books. That's where I found the Witcher book. But I mean, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you know, if you listen to this podcast, you're not going to be able to see it, but I found it. Really, describe it. Okay. This Holograph very f- holographic <laughs> font. <laughs> book. It's a very, very thick book produced by the ABC just called Universe. It's literally like I can murder someone with this book. It's so heavy. It looks, it looks like you're like accidentally like about to murder yourself with like, <laughs> like, <laughs> spinning it around. It's so thick. But yeah, it's fucking, it was just going, it was five bucks in a fucking op shop. And I was like, I cannot leave this in the bookshop. Crack it open, crack um, it open. I want to see But it's it. like. It's real pretty. It's just like it has everything <gasps> about the universe. Ooh, like it has everything. High about the gloss system. paper. High Ooh. gloss paper. This still has the oh, DVD ROM. Oh no, DVD. Because yeah, this this was released in two thousand and seven, so it still has the yeah the DVD accomplished like you know accompanying thing that you used to get with it. <laughs> so I've uh, yeah I've done I've done a lot with books this week, and I'm like I'm feeling like now that I'm back, I'm I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot more rested. Um, but That's yeah, so, so good. The, the nerdiest thing that I did was smash out six books in just over 48 hours and buy a whole bunch more at op shops. Well, for those, for those listening and not watching a book is a, a collection of pages <laughs> with, with material on them. <laughs> I almost spat up my iced coffee just then. <laughs> Margie though, what, what about you? What's the, what's the nerdiest thing you've been doing this week? Oh fuck. I got, I got roan boned again, pal. So it Oof. was, it was bloody Oof. rough. It was way worse this time around. This is the number two for you? Yeah, this is. I had okay. I had COVID three months and yeah. <laughs> five days before getting COVID again, and I was like, "Are you fucking <laughs> serious?" Um, so pretty angry about that. And I've still got a fucking oh the COVID. It's it's shit. Okay, if you have COVID, mm-hmm. please stay home. Like, please. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, mm-hmm. I'd, like wear a mask if you have have like just. Don't be a dick. Anyway, so I was I was in a fever dream state. I couldn't keep anything in my body. Just it was a disgusting foul time. I threw up on my blanket like a child. I had to wash my quilt. <laughs> I, was like, I was let's just say I was I was a feeble human for a week. Um, and I I watched the Lord of the Rings extended trilogy not once yeah. but twice <laughs> while while sick with COVID. So um, is that like was, when you were young and you got like a DVD or a video in the in the player, but you could just cut come to like get it out of there so you just rewatch the same thing over and over because you don't want to change it it was illegally streaming because i'm poor and i can't afford to i couldn't find anything where i could stream it so i mean i've never done anything illegal in my life look lord of the rings has got enough money off me in their fucking time um <laughs> so illegally streaming it and then just not knowing what to do like not having the thought capacity and i was like I need a hug from my mum or the equivalent Lord of the Rings extended trilogy. I need <laughs> Sam's little hopeful smiles and oh. Oh, and Faramir. <laughs> oh, he can, oh, Faramir. Mm. And oh, Aragorn. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was I was real lonely. It was it was a sad. Week. <laughs> <laughs> 
getting into it, dying just a little bit. <laughs> Don't die on the podcast. If you wouldn't mind waiting until after, that'd be. I just delightful. played a gig. Like I nearly had a heart attack on stage, <laughs> yeah. picking up my bass. I couldn't lift up. I couldn't even play bass during COVID because I was so weak that my bass was too heavy to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to finish recording some bass tracks. And I was just like, can't fucking do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> just feeble. So I'm a sad sob story. Grant's Fair. doing well. Josh, Josh is doing well. <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing pretty well. But Thriving. speaking of, of sad sob, sob stories, we are going to move into the uh, the nerd slash metal news for the the week. Uh, and this one, this one has been interesting and so it's also been like fairly explanatory so if you're um if you're any kind of nerd you obviously know the game doom you would have seen it be re-released in 2016 with an incredible soundtrack by an australian producer called mick gordon mick gordon is fucking incredible he's was stupidly talented the, is the soundtrack mick an australian name i feel like no one's called mick except in australia i feel like it probably yeah. mick Mick, Bridge, uh, yeah, I, Mick, yeah. Keith. It's it's a, it sounds like a very Aussie name, especially when we put our sort of like Mick on it, like it's yeah. a yeah, hard K. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Mick, yeah. You got to say but, the C and the K. Yeah. Mm. So obviously, because of the success of that, they wanted Mick to come back and do the Doom Eternal soundtrack. And so you know, it comes out. I didn't hear too much about what happened at the time, but I remember thinking like it wasn't that it was a bad soundtrack it just wasn't as memorable like it still had cool parts to it but it, like it wasn't as like memorable as the original it just it wasn't, wasn't it banger central it, yeah it i think it, it sounded, was the absolutely random tempo changes yeah that made yeah. no sense and so and, was, and then the backing track going into a completely different key and then yeah. returning back yeah so there, when, there was like, some odd it's, things it's not with the gameplay like yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, I mean, obviously, yeah, Grant, you could explain that from a more like, yeah, actually, like, musical standpoint. Like, I obviously. I can't, can't because I don't know anything about music. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah. And so, like, I was, I was always kind of curious. It's just like, oh, okay, fair enough, whatever. And then, you know, they started like looking more into it after it came out. There was actually quite a big backlash online about it and it was like well, like what the fuck is going on like like people people were complaining and the ost that came out which is separate to the soundtrack what's an, what's like, an ost original the, soundtrack yeah the the original soundtrack is, is separate to the score which like mick made so it's like the soundtrack kind of like pieced together in different ways and whatnot and there was like okay. the quality of that was weird and there were complaints and and marty stratton who's like the head of id software that produced doom put out this open letter on reddit i'm gonna i'm gonna link to all these in the show notes as well but he put this open letter out on reddit pretty much just blaming mick Sl for yeah. everything like like it's like slandering the fuck out of mick well that's and not like, nice nah but like yeah it was like he he just said like you know mick was unprofessional it was difficult to work with he was rushing everything blah 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 and so mick gordon wrote a huge, huge reply, oh. complete with oh. receipts. Before we get to the statement, though, also when mm. Mar Mar Marty Stratton made his uh, open letter, he also had quite a good reputation. Like he'd been around in a mm. lot of uh, a lot of media. He'd been mm. on uh, like a lot of, I think, like some of those Netflix specials. He'd been on there, so a lot of people were kind of like, "Oh, well, he's probably not lying about this. Like this seems like mm. pretty weird." But then most people that kind of knew about like the original soundtrack of doom 16 they were probably thought oh this doesn't make sense either mm. but it seemed like you no one would flat out lie that hard so a lot of people tended to believe him when it came out so mick gordon got yeah, a it's, lot it's, of flack it's 2022 yeah. like to publicly lie and not like a little white lie like my underwear is pink like you know when you're wearing black <laughs> you know like when you know like it, to publicly get out there and to spread mistruths and misinformation is, I, I, do we not know by now, but that it's not going to fucking work out. Like uh, the, yeah. inter the internet. Yeah. The, screenshots uh, are pre like, you know, you go back fucking 20 years. Sure. You probably get away with it, but in, in the, like, you know, time and age of screenshots, like people quite easily keep receipts, but yeah, like, like as, as Grant said, like Mick actually did cop a, like a lot of flack for it. Um, and so, yeah, recently Mick put out, his own statement which is it's like it a is, thesis it, it is, is yeah. like 30 pages it is very very long but yeah complete with like a nerd running, after my own heart yeah. love it yeah like running after the entire timeline of what happened like the only thing it's missing is an index 
Yeah, <laughs> it would be nice. He, he didn't do a nice. table of contents, so losing some marks for that. <laughs> From memory, I think there kind of is almost a little table of contents at the start. I'm pretty sure there might be. I'd have to go back and look. But <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. But basically, Mick goes on to say, when they did the first soundtrack, it was like the levels were like as soon as they'd finish a level, they'd give it to Mick so he could like you know score it to that level because that's how any game should work any film should work when you have that sort of score but instead they didn't go that sort of way instead they gave him not even like a full storyboard or anything like that it was literally just like rough ideas on what was happening and said go and do it and so he would kind of like make stuff up he's like but this isn't really gonna work like he like there's emails of him going back suggesting that this isn't really gonna work like we should like flagging very early on Mm. that something was gonna go wrong and they were like no no no, it'll be fine just kind of go which doesn't make sense because the wis system that they use for games is essentially like the music reacts to your path and selections that you make within the game so what you're doing within the game is what changes the music in the background so it's like completely different to just playing an album behind someone playing like there's a whole yeah. logic like algorithm you, behind it even as a non-gamer like my limited gaming experience of you know like crash bandicoot and stuff like <laughs> you know you, you you enter the mysterious dark room and the ominous dungeon crawl music comes on you know like yeah. you don't yeah you don't enter the room and it's like unts, unts, unts. yeah and you're like all right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> party <And> dungeon even, <laughs> like, yeah but even for like doom 2016 is it's beyond like entering a room it's like if you start moving faster in the game, it changes, it finds a path to a type of music that's going faster. Like it, it's like super intuitive to what you're doing. And then, then they've asked him to write, okay, you have no idea about this environment or what someone's going to be doing through here, but we still want you to write two fully mastered tracks a month. For yeah. oh, Sorry, two levels worth of music a month. So it's not even two tracks. Like that's that could be anywhere from, that could be half an hour of music mastered a month. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know, they're not with sure. no around. reference. Yeah, with no direction. And they were like, he would send them stuff and they would re- like send it back. They would reject it. He would send them like even just like demo ideas and they would send it back and say, no, we're not interested in that. And then like, it's like, it's a too long, didn't read. Like the, I'll, I'll link to some YouTube videos in the thing as well. But yeah, basically he went on to say like, you know, in the end they announced that they were going to have this collector's edition uh, OST, like, like separate to the score. They were going to have the OST, but they never told him they were doing like literally <laughs> announced it at e3 with his name attached to it saying we're going to be doing this it's you know it's Mick they Gold's literally OST, didn't contract him to produce yeah, an original they, soundtrack they hadn't told him they were going to do it at all and then like you know there was I just he's like shout out his work ethic like if this was me and i was like i beg not nah, like fuck off but and during even- all this as well he hasn't been paid for 11 months yeah yeah, he's like like dealing with issues back and forward here. Like, and then, like I said, there's, there's so much more to this. But in the end, they like suggested that they bring in this other guy, uh, Chad. I forget Chad's last name. To, Chad Michael Murray. Chad, Chad Mossman. Yeah, to to kind of like redo the, the score with Mick, and then like Mick gets like here's the final product. It has no say in what the final product is when they release it, and they've credited like Mick Gordon and Chad Mosma on every single track, even though Chad didn't write any of the tracks to the point where in the OSC as well, they released demos that Mick had sent through, like not even but master they, tracks. It was like, like shitty. It demos. was demos that they <laughs> refused to pay for. So essentially thanks, thanks, yeah. garage band. <laughs> they, they asked for two hours and 20 minutes worth of level music. He produced f- double that four hours and 40 mm. minutes worth of music and some of that was rejected but they ended up using it all in the game you only got paid for half of it and what That's happened fucked. with this this side uh guy that they got in to produce the original soundtrack originally they said at and like march 4th or something like that 2020 that we need to have this by april 19th and we don't know if you're going to be able to do it in time no, it was may this- it was may so yeah. it was after oh, yeah. the day. So it was after the date that they needed it. Um, yeah. And he was, yeah. So like, yeah, we needed this uh, last month. <laughs> <laughs> but so they say that, oh, so Chad Mossman's, he's only been doing this for a couple of weeks because just in case you can't make it. And then when Mick Gordon gets his hands on the reference tracks that they show him for what Chad Mossman's has done, uh, essentially if you make like audio files, like any computer file when you make it, it has a save date on when it was produced. And these files were actually produced in August 2019. So they had this guy working on the side on an original soundtrack for six months. Yeah. So it seems like they never had a plan to get Mick Gordon to do it. They're always going to shaft him. 
and this guy's mix uh, this guy's soundtrack that he's made is essentially he's just chopped up parts from the wi's engine in the game that like that that path finding system that just uses that full four four hours of music to compose some garbage that has random tempo changes because it is obviously not a musician mm. and like random key changes like it's it's fully just chopped with just like a cut off like there's clipping there's oh. artifacts everywhere <laughs> just all through it it's basically yeah. like you know, it's just turning the gain on full and being like, fuck it, boys, let's go. Yeah, let's go, boys. That's my approach. It. But yeah, then Marty goes on to offer um, Mick Gordon a six-figure sum to never talk about this again. So they basically to, get, try to, to take, give him to harsh To take money. responsibility. Yeah, wanted him to take the hit for this again. being bad instead of it yeah. being id software's issue. They wanted him to be his, take all blame, never say anything bad about Zenimax, which is a shame because Bethesda is one of my favorite companies. So uh, it, it really hurts. Yeah, it sucks. And now like, I mean, there's a lot more details to that. The links will be in the show notes for all the thing. Yeah. But yeah, it kind of like it sucks that now Bethesda have chimed in completely backing marty stratton as well mm. it's like i mean like and they probably like contractually understand they probably had to but it sucks that it's like this could have been handled better they just put something on twitter just being like yeah nah this is you know we're, we back marty and everyone who did software they said like mick and like probably fair enough to their claim like mick probably did leave some parts of it out like everyone yeah. kind of tell their own the truth's always somewhere in the story. middle yeah the truth's somewhere in the middle but it's like Mick has enough receipts to show that, like, even if he lets some stuff out, it is still in the wrong here. Um, yeah, absolutely. So. Like, would you guys take the money <laughs> if you got offered six figures? To- no, I mean, yeah, that's the, like, if I was in his position, absolutely not. Like, I mean, if I was like, even if I was like desperate for money, it's not enough it's, like, money to retire because it's going to completely no. obliterate his career. Yeah, he, he'd be fucked yeah, for the rest true. of his life. Like he'd be, yeah, it, it cost him like professional things afterwards. Like, like thankfully he's, he's mixed going on to say like at the end of it that like he's been working on new stuff now and it has been some of the best stuff he's ever worked on. He's really thankful, but it's like, yeah, he, he did lose a lot of work originally after you know, Marty Stratton's open letter came out because everyone thought, oh, you know, he's lost it. Like, you know, he doesn't oh. have that thing again. And it's like, yeah, it's like, this is bad. This is your fault. So it's... it's it- Go on to say at the end of the lope, the op, not open letter, sorry, from uh, Mick Gordon's reply that he he didn't even get paid for the OST from 2016 doom uh, either. No, all right, that's I mean, <laughs> cool. That's uh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's it's yeah. drama, drama, drama. But it's one of those things as well. It's like, and I guess it's probably because it's like people could say, oh, you know, you've just got to have better contracts. Like Mick had a pretty good contract where he was promised a lot of things, but even afterwards, like. No, the people still find a way around things. Like he had an agreement with Bethesda that he was going to be paid for these things. And like he had extensions if he needed them. And Marty Stratton said, absolutely not. Like, don't care what you've been told. Don't care what you've got in writing. This is the date you need it by. It's like... It, so essentially when- what the issue was is if the if the, uh, the soundtrack wasn't released by the 20th of April, then everyone would be eligible to get refunds and not have to return their games because they mm. didn't like anyone who got a collector's edition that didn't receive the soundtrack would be eligible because they hadn't received what they'd paid for. So that's yeah. why he's like, it has to be out by this date because otherwise oh. under consumer law, people can get their money back from us. Yeah. Uh, Which like, I, I understand that it's like, but like Bethesda promised Mick that he would have more time if he needed it. And it's like, I can understand it like that. That's Bethesda's fuck up. They shouldn't have fucking said that to Mick. But it's like, yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's like you really do have to be careful who you work for. But it kind of shows that like it doesn't matter. Like Mick is one of the most respected like composers in the music scene now, like in especially in the gaming space. And if it can happen to him, like fucking, yeah, people trying to get into this industry. Honestly, he's right. probably the only person with enough power that was able yeah. to actually talk up. Like yeah. anyone that was like, he's like to most people bigger than Doom anyway. Yeah. Like if if there's imagine anyone smaller than him being able to try but like try and defend themselves for something like that, it would never be able. To, it would not wouldn't be feasible. Yeah, Absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. It's fucking like yeah, it's it's pretty fucking wild. But yeah, I'm I'm stoked that he's been able to kind of move forward with other projects, and I'm I'm keen to see what he does because like he's fucking talented. Like he's stupidly talented, and I like yeah. I always knew there was a reason why that soundtrack just didn't hit as hard, and like it kind of it makes sense now, like the absolute yeah. fucking demands in him. And it's like, it is, you know, we really should actually try and find 
like someone in the gaming space because like the you know the whole concept of crunch like when they like they have a date they have to meet and like the hours They're forced to work 24 7 basically oh, what, what they put programmers under is fucking ridiculous and I, I would love to talk to a programmer more about that and like yeah find i've, out I've heard some i've heard some like. stuff i've heard some yeah. stuff from um my best mate's sister is working in video game development and was just not having a good time oh like, get her on um um, yeah, I, I think she left the company based on just the shit that was going down, which yeah. the, the crunch. Yeah. The crunch. Um, um, but yeah, so if you are a developer and you've experienced some shit, tell mm. us and we will tell well, yeah. people. Let us know. I'll blow some whistles. <laughs> I'd be fucking <laughs> curious to hear about it. But yeah, like it really, really does suck for Mick, but mm. yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll, Link in the show notes to so like all the, the the letters that reply, as well as some some YouTube videos. Like yeah, Nick Nocturnal, who's an amazing like like heavy metal YouTuber, did a whole thing about it, which is how I came across it. Mm. Um, so shout out to Nick because he makes me laugh with some of his videos, and he's actually a really sweet dude. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll I'll link all that in the show notes as well. But uh, yeah, it is it is about time that we move into the main beat for this uh, episode of Balrogs Ooh. and Blast Beats Blast this Blast week. Beats. It's, it's the episode it's we've just called Gotta Catch a Mole. And it's Obsession. <laughs> yeah. It is. Uh, thank, uh, you, thank you for the suggestion as well. Um, mm. Yeah, we got a suggestion from one of our listeners, which we yeah. love. So yeah, if you have an idea, do. yeah, give us a shout out. Thanks, Henry. Let us know. Slide into our DMs. Shout out, Henry. <laughs> uh, yeah, slide into our DMs like on uh, Instagram or TikTok and, and uh, let us know or on Facebook. I forget to check Facebook, but. It's there. Um, I didn't even know we had a face. Messenger, messenger That's pigeon cool. also accepted. Messenger pigeon, hundred percent, hundred percent. I would love a pet pigeon <laughs> personally. It's, uh... But we are talking this week about the the concept of collections because obviously it's such a, like I mean you could look in the background of the video if you're watching and you can see a small part of my uh, <laughs> Magic the Gathering collection and I think nerd like, alert. It's it's something that nerds are quite known for is collecting different things and uh you know so yeah obviously we want to kind of have a chat about that um i guess starting with why why do we feel the need to collect things where does that come from i've i've got you covered uh (laughs) so um i haven't looked into like i didn't go into the psychology of like memorabilia stuff you know like which i would love to talk about sometime about why we need X branded things like that's yeah. a different one but yeah. um yeah I'm looking at like why people collect stuff like why are people little magpies um <laughs> over a third of the people in the UK and USA collect something which is a huge amount of people and you're going to collect for different reasons so if you collect stamps for example you might be really proud of your rare finds and you might be like an obsessive sort of collector like oh it's an 1862 stamp oh like you know <laughs> or if you're a football fan who collects club memorabilia then maybe it's more about expressing pride and club loyalty because like mm. you know you're really proud of the sports team cuz i guess and also he- with that as well it could be memories too like it could be like a specific yeah, absolutely. thing that you've seen Yeah, like people who get shirts at every gig that they go to because that's like a way to remember it and stuff. Um, And humans have only been able to collect relatively recently. So since we stopped being nomadic, so that's like about 12,000 years ago. So it's still like a newer sort of thing. And it's Mm. a contested one. Um, (laughs) And people are more likely to begin a collection once they possess two of one item. So this is because you associate owning the same objects, like owning two of the same thing as being like, wasteful or superfluous and you don't want to get rid of something but then you don't want to get rid of something that you enjoy so you know you've got two little figurines and you're like but I really fucking love them I don't want to get rid of them and then (laughs) so you've got to you've got to justify it so it becomes really difficult to justify so you're like well if I get more then it's a collection. <laughs> so that's one of the theories to it. Um, so there's, there it are a lot of so different. It sounds so unhealthy things. when you put it like that. It sounds. I know, so right? Unhealthy. <laughs> it's like I already, I already have one teacup. Why do I need another one? No, I'll get a collection. That's it. I mean, no, where do you I'll draw the line? Ten teacups. <laughs> I mean, but like, it's not collecting if it's something of a look. That it's there's a lot. So Dr. Shirley Mueller is like the authority on the psychology of collecting, and she says that collectors collect because we're driven by the desire to experience pleasure. 
So we get psychological reinforcement from collecting and it'll feed into our pleasure center, which is the nucleus accumbens. And then this will drive your desire to collect. So once you get that pleasure center feedback loop, once your brain gets hooked into that, like, you know, it becomes something that you really need and want. So you get the dopamine hit when you get something, like when you get a new item in your collection and that it's going to bring you joy and that's going to reinforce the feeling that your collection is good and so on and so forth. Hmm. Um, you can also get reinforcement from pride, like, um, you know, from acquiring new items or which can be heightened more when you gather those items into a group for the first time, like when you kind of set them all up together and you go like, oh. That's um, a nice boulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice rock. <laughs> uh, and then you, you also might want to set yourself apart from other collectors um, to feel that pride from finding something really rare or maybe you find a really good price and that's going to be a good chemical pleasure center hit because Mm. you're like oh I got such a good bargain and the thrill of the chase um can also um be a stimulation which I've got a bit about but um there's a psychoanalytical explanation so we're getting Freudian (laughs) um (laughs) one idea is that unloved children learn to seek comfort in accumulating belongings um or that collecting is a way of imposing order on the world so (laughs) Those who, those who collect may have experienced abandonment issues as a child wow. or they feel that they lack control over their lives. By gathering and curating objects, you could bring some order. I feel like that's, it should be the other way around. It's like people who, like people, it's not people who collect may have been abandoned. It should be people who have been abandoned may collect. Like I feel like that's, <laughs> that's the chicken and the egg scenario. I feel like it's mm. not. Nope, there's no way to know. There's no <laughs> way to know. <laughs> um, another nice bleak explanation. Oh, actually, can we, for a sec. I guess you got to think about it this way, though. If you collect so much of something, you're going to be abandoned. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently, it doesn't apparently matter. Collecting can be a can be a social thing for people because you can go to meetups and stuff. Some people, <laughs> yeah. some some collectors actually say they like collecting for the social aspect of it. So, <laughs> that's um, an excuse. My favorite explanation <laughs> was that it's motivated by existential anxiety. So the collection will be an extension of our identity so that when we're dead, we will live on as the collection. Um, and wow. a collection kind of represents hard work and your personal museum or something. <laughs> it's pretty weird. That's um, dark. Some, some suggest, like from an evolutionary standpoint, that a collection's a way to attract potential mates by signaling an ability <laughs> to collect resources. Josh, yeah. Josh, all, I just All my Magic Josh. the Gathering cards, ladies. <laughs> you, ladies you, out there, guys. all my Magic the Gathering cards. Look at them all. Aren't you Aren't you aroused and want to make babies with me? And my you Magic guys, the Gathering you cards. Guys bow, you guys know bowerbirds? So, like, the men set up this really elaborate nest and they collect blue things and decorate. Yeah. And then the men do, like, a little dance display. <laughs> I'm just imagining you doing that with Magic cards. So you just like strut around your nest, like twit, twit, twit. And like, I've just been like, look at this. Ooh, uh, Black Lotus. Yeah. <laughs> look at my Omnath deck. Look at my Omnath deck. Yes, it's, it's, pretty, it's four colors now. Yes, yes, my Omnath deck. Um, <laughs> there's also um, the endowment effect. Um, so we value things more once we own them. So it's harder to let go of things once you own them. So you're more likely to collect. Um, some people believe that collecting symbolically fills the gaps of what we're subconsciously looking for in ourselves. <laughs> um, some, some people do it to connect to a person or a certain historical period or a certain cultural thing. So if you collect heaps of Pokemon memorabilia, that's you being like, I just want to connect to Pokemon. Like, yeah. Um, but all of these reinforcement theories, um, uh, part of the aspect is anticipation. Um, so when it's nascent, so it's before it's actioned, uh, the collector's desire allows them to imagine anything that they want about the desired objects and like the joy that the desired objects are going to bring and how good it's going to be when you get it. So that in- it's like the anticipation of having it is the really good part. And anticipation, they've actually done MRIs of people's brains and the brain is more stimulated when they're anticipating getting something, like when they're anticipating collecting something than when they actually get the thing that they've been anticipating. (laughs) 
So your brain, the pleasure center is more active um, when you're, when you, you've got it coming in the mail, yeah. you know, like that kind of a thing. But that also explains why we love, you know, there's, there's the joke in the Magic the Gathering community about how like, you know, you shouldn't crack a pack. You should just buy singles and buy the card that you want. But it's so much more exciting cracking a the pack than just buying the single, even though this is the card that I want and it's right here. It's like, yeah, but it could be in this it. pack too. Like, it <laughs> right? Could be. right? Like, oh, honestly, like it, like just yeah, the anticipation of a fresh MTG like uh, oh little booster pack. Mm. I really um, want to get that five dollar card, but it could be in this nine dollar pack. <laughs> it <could be>. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the psychology of it's kind of it's kind of a thing. It's just to do with pleasure center mostly, and mm. just kind of reinforcing the pleasure center. And the anticipation is probably the biggest thing that they've actually been able to characterize. So Makes that's Makes that's sense. what I could find out. Hmm. I also found out that an octophilist collects teddy bears. <laughs> octophilist from Arctos, <laughs> meaning bear. A deltiologist collects delts. No, nah, um, they collect postcards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what, what what does a numismatist numismatist collect? Colds. Numismatist. <laughs> no. Nah, I got nothing. Coins from numisma, meaning current coin. I was two letters off. I was close. Yeah, you're pretty close. <laughs> uh, okay, a filuminist. I don't know. Collects yeah, flutes. Uh, no, it connects with uh, throats. Fil- like, like tears throats Lumin. out of people. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, spread no, it out. Uh, <laughs> filuminist collects matchboxes. So close. There, there is a box uh, in your throat, your voice yep, box. Yep, yeah. Yep. And a fil- 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 philatelist. <laughs> Philatelist collects, collects blowjobs. Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> collects big collects, dicks. I do have some facts about dick collecting for later, but they collect <laughs> they collect stamps, uh, which comes from atelier, meaning exemption from payment. Um, <laughs> I sorry, I love etymology. I couldn't resist psychology, etymology, same thing. It's so good. It's so entomology good. though can suck a phallus. <laughs> <laughs> my brain always gets those two mixed up and it's so fucking annoying that they're so close together it means such different things <laughs> we like i like yeah you know, I, I think i get it, it's joked about a lot that i like i'm a hoarder and so i had to like look up exactly like what the joked. difference between a hoarder hey oh. hey because i found out psychologically speaking i'm not a hoarder for two reasons yeah it's actually in the dsm5 as a condition <laughs> 100%. Like extreme, extreme hoarding is not like uh, mild hoarding. You know? Yeah. So I, yeah. I've, I found like a, a definition of like the difference between uh, hoarding and collecting. And it says that both hoarding and collective involve assigning special value to possessions, often a value that goes beyond the physical characteristics of the object. For yeah. collectors, new possessions become part of a larger set of items consi- uh, and considerable time and energy go into organizing and displaying them. When collecting is healthy, the display or storage of these things does not impede the use of active living areas of the home. When a collector expands acquisitions beyond well-defined collection and loses the ability to keep these possessions organized, Organized, it becomes a hoarding problem. You know, for the person, yeah. yeah, for the person whose collecting has become hoarding, possessions become unorganized piles of clutter that are so large they prevent rooms from being used for normal activities. When it becomes hoarding, mm-hmm. motivation to display them is lost, and people become fearful of others seeing, touching, or even commenting on their belongings. Yet the drive to add more to the collection still leads them to acquire things that only end that up sounds, in a pile. That sounds sounds like my bedroom. I'm afraid of people seeing a <laughs> fucking messy in this. So what? <laughs> don't you touch can- that. I don't know if those under wear a clean step back. So what, what I'm hearing is, Josh, is the only reason why you're not a holder is because you know how to make your own shelves. Yes, absolutely. That's, <laughs> that is that is exactly why. Because if I didn't like, um, have the ability to just be on the floor at the back. Yeah, so, I would absolutely. Um, also, um, hoarding is something that's compulsive and you cannot control your behavior, wherein collectors do have control over it but they might still make a bad decision. Like mm. you might still spend money that's meant for groceries on a limited edition Star Wars Lego set because it's really fucking cool. But you know, <laughs> like you still made that bad decision and you know that you did. Well, um, is- also, oops, also hoarders, um, they can't throw stuff out. It's actually um, like a hoarder has, this is from the DSM definition, um, is that 
like it's extremely distressing to someone who is a hoarder mm. um, if if they have to get rid of something. It's like, you know, like a pile of shit in the corner of the house and they're like, oh, no, I can't throw out that receipt from t- 10 years ago where a collector <laughs> has a specific niche area of interest and, I mean, it would probably still upset them but they would be able to let something go. <laughs> it would just be like it's it's less of a distress. It would be upsetting not distressing yeah if that makes sense yeah but um, this is where like i like i'll like test myself and i tested myself recently and i <laughs> I, I, test I, yourself. I did <laughs> and i admit how, I have, how good's asd guys <laughs> i admit that i have regrets because like the you know, <laughs> i do i 100 percent do because the the new uh warhammer 40,000 commander decks came out and i like i was like i want this i want this i want this just to test myself i'm like i'm not gonna buy them i'm just gonna be like they're just there just going to do the thing and they were like it was 200 bucks for four sets and now they've come out demand's gone through the roof and now they're like 300 bucks for four sets and i'm like fuck i really should have just fucking bought them but it's like i was proud of the fact that i just said you know what i'm not gonna yeah and i haven't and i don't feel like gross about it but i am mad about the fact that now they're more expensive and if i don't want them i have to fucking like price and it's proof them. that you can <laughs> yes so i'm not yeah. in trouble yet so you collect Warhammer is what you're saying. Uh, that's, that's Well, I think Josh has a lot of different collections. I actually, uh, I actually only have three that I was thinking about. I have Magic, I have Warhammer, and I have books. I used to collect vinyl, but I actually sold my entire vinyl collection lately. Like I've got like my That's favorite. a lie. I could see vinyl behind you I, right I, now. I saved my favorites. Like I've, I've literally – I used to have about like 1,200 to 1,500 – records and now i have maybe not including like the vinyl from my record label that i kind of keep as like a you know a nostalgia yeah. of the label that i created but like of just like bands that i just love i have maybe maybe 50 vinyl if that like i just kept my favorite albums and ones that are just worth a ridiculous amount of money and just sold the rest in bulk to someone because i was like i don't use these these just sit on the shelf like are you a record player are you or are you one of those people like me <laughs> I do. I've got a record player. I don't know if the needle works, and I don't. I like that's the thing is because I don't listen to the records. And I was just kind of like, eh. I was yeah. like, most modern albums have the same mix on the on the <laughs> what's it on the wax anyway, so it doesn't Man, matter. I've put, yeah. I've put out a record on vinyl, and I do not have a copy of it. I should probably rectify should that. Hundred percent do that. I yeah. have shotgunned my parents' record collection when they die, though. Um. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could absolutely let some industry secrets sni- slip about that that exact thing, Grant. But I'm uh, I'm not going to because because you're gonna is... lose money. <laughs> no, no, no. It, was, it wasn't it wasn't on my record label. It was on uh. a different record label. But I know, like, let's just say I read a review on this particular vinyl, and like the the reviewer was going on about how amazing and crisp it sounded on vinyl. Whereas I know for a fact that that Same vinyl. Thanks, bruv. Made- we couldn't find the masters, so I came home. I have the album on CD. I took the album on CD, ripped it to WAV files using iTunes, and used that as the vinyl master. And I was like, <laughs> it is all a fucking lie. It is actually a fucking lie. So, yeah, so as a complete lie, I, 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 I won't name that, but it's like, it is a very big and very popular band. And, I'll uh, just say, I reckon I know exactly who it is, but <laughs> let's, let's let's guess, let's speculate wildly. Speculate wildly in the comments. Uh, yeah, you can, you, can, you can stipulate in the DMs. I'll never admit it, but uh, yeah, it's it's not any band signed oh, to my record label. I, I feel was left just, out now. I was just helping out on this, but it's a yeah, so it's a it's a whole thing. Mm. <laughs> but yes, great, you're 100 percent right there. <laughs> great, what what do you think? It. Like, great, I know I that you've got. Bits and pieces, like you have, like your your Yu Gi Oh cards. I'm not a what, huge collector. I was gonna say, yeah. What do you collect? Like I know you quite well. I was trying to think about what does Grant collect. No, nah, so like I'm, i band shirts. I collect things in waves, but I'm also just as happy to get rid of them when I'm done with it. Mm. So like, say like when I got into Magic, I collected it pretty hard. Now that um, I like to play it, but I don't care about collecting it. Like I'm, mm. I've got like three, four tubs of Magic cards that I'm about to get rid of. Because I don't touch them, I only play my Dibs. commander decks. Yeah, I was yeah well, say, so, you, so you're giving them to me, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's probably like twenty thousand cards in there that I just don't use. But then, then like I used to have like a massive collection of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I sold them all except for like my Dark Magician deck, like which I kept myself because that's like a pretty sentimental thing. I used to have heaps of guitars, but I sold a lot of them because I just couldn't play them all. But I <laughs> like I kept my favorite ones, so I'd say like. I like to collect things, but I kind of just end up with 
the thing that I really liked from it and ended up getting rid of the rest of it. So I'd say I have a collection of a lot of different things, but only my most favorite parts of all those different things. Well, it, I guess then that that's an interesting question that we kind of write down that maybe because you've had a bit of experience is like when you answer is like, when, when have you found it's time to let go of that collection? Like, like what has kind of triggered that decision where you've been like, I've collected this, that's it. And now I'm moving it on. Like what, like, where does that come from? Uh, well, I'd say for me, like I'm a sucker for hyperfixation. So usually whenever the next, <laughs> what? <thing> no! on, <laughs> nah, it's, uh, it's usually a little while after it's probably when something's been sitting there for a while and I need money. And I'm like, well, I really don't use this and I really could use money. Like there's like, <laughs> like I, even like guitars, like I sold like a Ernie Ball Music Man, which is like a really nice guitar because um, yeah. I had to play for pay for flights. A few, like 2018, I was lucky enough to tour with the Black Dahlia Murder. So I had to sell so my guitar cool. to be able to afford the humble flights brag. for that. Humble brag. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was, the, that was such a good humble brag. It, does, it is. Um, it's only because I'm, I'm so sad still about Trevor's passing that I had to fair. put it out yeah. there. Fair. Um, but yeah, so I had to sell. That's probably one of my favorite guitars. And I, that's something I regret selling is probably guitars that I've let go over the years. But there's also a shitload that I've bought and let go of that I couldn't care less about. Like my <laughs> my grail of guitars is I've got a one of 24 Ibanez that's got like a, it's like seafoam green top. And basically it's got like a bird's eye. It's real pretty. Roasted. It basically looks like the beach. It, nice. it looks like the beach. It's gorgeous. I got it for $150 because Studio 19 <gasps> made some mistakes. And <laughs> it was a $3,000 guitar. Amazing. So, yeah, that was Whoa, exciting. That's... <laughs> I mean, I don't think you should be sad about letting go of a guitar to pay for flights for such a cool mm. opportunity. That's mm. uh, that's. No, I think it's more I was sad because if I was just a even more slightly – uh, more organized person at the time, like it's a couple thousand dollars. Oh, it wasn't even a couple thousand dollars. I think it was like well, twelve hundred. I sold this guitar for. That's probably worth like at least two grand. Like at the end of the day, oh. like I probably could have got twelve hundred dollars a bit easier if I was better organized. But I wasn't. <laughs> oh. I think that's what's more upsetting about it. Fair. Yeah, that's a that's a large regret. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, so, apart from that, so like, oh yeah, my collections are weird like i have like obviously as you said like i got a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like mostly dark magician like i got like my pop finals i have like oh, you know like or like naruto like you know i collect like naruto hoodies um i got like some pop finals for that or just like obscure shit like samurai jack on dvd like a format that i can't <laughs> watch like i've got like harvey Birdman, like old like mid 2000s cartoons that no one watches amazing like, i've got that stuff on like dvd actually i do have quite a big dvd collection uh, but I, I never yeah, use it. I mean, that was literally the thing that I was just thinking is like, I, <laughs> so when I was 19, I got a job at JB Hi-Fi. And if you're, if you're like an international listener, JB Hi-Fi is like a discount CD, DVD, and like electronics retailer. And I just Is it like, really that discount? It used to be discount. These days it's not as much, but like, it used to be like, they would have just like amounted of like $10 DVDs. And so I would like spend half my paycheck most weeks. And so like I, I had garnished quite a collection and then I started dating this girl who had a collection that rivaled my own. And so we Ooh. ended up, yeah, we ended up you like, killed her. <laughs> no, we, yeah. we ended up getting married and then divorced, but that's a whole other side story. But like when we, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drama, at, zero to hundred pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> at the end of that whole thing, when we combined them and at the end, we probably had without exaggeration about 8,000 DVDs and about 2,000 Blu-rays or thereabouts. Like did, we had, did you have a, did you have a prenup? That's what I was going to say. Like, did, did you have a DVD <laughs> prenup? No, no I, mean, I was like, I just, I walked away and left them all to her. So she's got them all now. I don't know what she's done, with them, but there yeah, was well, some like, we, we got to it. the point where we would find the best release of each thing throughout the world. And my favorite one that we had, we had a, the French collector's edition of Inglorious Bastards came in this Fantastic box. movie amazing movie mm. but came in this box you opened up the box and it had like it obviously it had like the dvd and it had some like photos and shit but my favorite two things it had it had a baseball bat on a keychain and it had the uh the recipe for the apple strudel from that restaurant that they use like they literally had like a Sick. recipe card with that on it and so yeah so we would like hunt down like whether it was french or it was german or it was american or it was australian whatever like was the best collector's version we found some fucking sick stuff but yeah that, that collection would have been worth a mountain but yeah at the end of it i just kind of like walked away and just you can just you can have that 
you can. Well, you'd be it. laughing now because that shit's useless. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, I, think, I think that's. that's uh, it wasn't traumatic at all. <laughs> and that's the same thing as like my vinyl collection is like I I sold it now because I realized like obviously vinyl's on quite a high, but it's it's not going to get any bigger. It's not like like magic cards are going to increase over time and time and time. Like certain albums obviously are, but general like vinyl generally speaking is not going to get any bigger. Oh, you, you haven't heard that the new Tesla has a record player in it. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, that would uh, be the fucking worst the future. <laughs> but like, yeah. And so I think maybe like this is the same with DVDs is there would have been like the perfect point to sell that. And like, yeah, it's, it's long gone now. It's like, yeah, you find DVDs for like a dollar if you fucking, yeah. If you're lucky, you could sell them for a dollar each. So, you know, yeah, it wouldn't have been worth mm. anything. <laughs> It'd be worth about $8,000 then. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah. If you tried to sell it though, like as a whole, yeah. like no one's paying more than no. like four thousand for it. Yeah. Like it's... I mean, individual transactions, you could get eight thousand dollars, but then you have to yeah. weigh up your time yeah. about Shipping. individually selling eight thousand yeah. DVDs. There is too much effort involved in that. I mean, you get like a but, market store somewhere, I guess. Like, you know, like go to the Campbell Market and do it there, but shrug emoji. But then you also have an incredibly <laughs> niche, a niche. Um, taste of movies as well it's like you're selling the titanic <laughs> no nah, but like yeah we, we, i've we, never seen the titanic it's right. in the film titanic yeah wow yeah. that's that i would say that's weird but i haven't seen like the godfather or shawshank redemption so i can't judge anything. i no, either, actually no. watched the shawshank redemption when i was on holiday because it was on free to air i'm like yeah this is all right <laughs> that's, that's dark <laughs> but bringing it back to collections i guess we, I, I want to put out this question to everyone and, and maybe like, marky we'll start with you is do you have like a collection goal or is it something that you've always wanted? Like, is there a specific collection that you'd love to have or like a specific item that you'd love to collect? Well, th since nobody asked, I do collect something. <laughs> I collect, <laughs> I collect duck figurines. Um, I've got. As in like, uh, like, like actual like cartoon ducks or like actual ducks. Like, are we talking? Just, just like, just little duckies. Just little ducks. This, 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 this <laughs> one's, this one's a small duck. So anytime yeah. I see a duck, I should just buy it and give it to you is what you're saying. Yeah, I like weird ones from op shops. Some of them are wood. <laughs> uh, some, some of them, some of them are little jewelry boxes. I have one that's a bike light. I don't actually ride a bicycle, <laughs> but it's it's wearing it's wearing a helmet that actually does up, and it's a bike light that lights up, and it's a key ring as well. Um, I'm really proud, really proud of it. Um, I, I love I love my ducks. Um, I, I love ducks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna think about this forever now. Anytime I see a duck for the rest of my life, I'm just gonna to have to get yeah. it. For you yes, uh, and listeners, now you have to as well. Anytime you see a duck, I'm one of those people. I just, I just fucking love ducks. Um, anyway, um, if is there anything that I'd really want to collect? Fucking guitar pedals, but also like I already do have like a substantial collection of them. Like you know, how many drives does one need? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have options. you got to have some versatility there. Uh, books, I like to buy books and read them. Um, so I have like a shit ton of books, which is a lot. Um, but that's kind of it. Oh, and sequin clothing. But if that's not collecting. It's dressing myself. Uh, it's basic survival. It's, it's being fabulous is what it is. <laughs> it's being fabulous, yeah. Um, but I'm just me like looking around like, hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, and paint. I, I have shit tons of paint. Like there's a box that, on the is, floor next next to my foot. Is that actually a collection? <laughs> is that considered a collection? Can you collect paint? Well, that's that's what I I don't yeah, know. Like, like, there's limited edition paint, surely. It's got um, pink sparkles in it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, metallic. Um, I mean, I've got I've got my acrylic paints inside, and I've probably got like. 50 to 100 of those but like there's, there's a lot of different colors there's a lot of different pigments and i do study it so it's a professional interest this one's yeah. got so, van gogh's blood in it at least if you study it you can the tears it van off. <laughs> I, I guess if you were like collecting like one of like you know like if you were getting you know some sort of like one color like you know like a lime green but in every single brand of paint that ever there was like uh, technically that would be a collection i guess yeah, it's like how many cadmium yellows can you have? Mm. You know, like, um, and, you know, there are differences in quality, especially like oil paints and stuff. But um, I do have a shit ton of oil paints too, but they're mostly just like inherited from a dead artist. So um, that cool things. Yeah. Um, okay. I <laughs> just had a full yes. COVID brain. I, I, just had just a, brain I think just I just had a stroke. Off for a second then. <laughs> 
<laughs> but do you, do you have a goal though, Maggie? Is there some, something in particular oh, that you'd love to have? What I wanted to with? ask mm. was, oh, what I would love to have is just like every room of my house have tiny shelves up the top that are all just lined with ducks. Nice. Because there, there is a phobia that, a fear that somewhere, somehow a duck is always watching you. That's a total phobia that people have. Yep. So that way every room in my house could be that. That's also and, terrifying because aren't ducks like hella rapists as well? <laughs> <laughs> Ma- male ducks have got corkscrew penises that kind of latch in there when they're having sex with the females so they can't run away but that's just <laughs> uh that's just bird evolution i wouldn't say i wouldn't say reproduction in the animal kingdom's particularly glamorous i do want to ask this is what i had a stroke about um what do you guys think when someone calls your tattoos a collection <laughs> Just like I, I, I hate like, it. The idea of a tattoo oh. collector is so wanky. Like there is. I know that's quite a collection you've got there. Collecting tattoos, like no, you're not. You're you're a hundred. Honestly, right. to me, like my thought of collecting tattoos means you have a wall of other people's <laughs> pictures on it. Like that's collecting tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. If if you're not yeah skinning human beings and mounting their skin. Yeah. If you're not like Ed Gein, then that's, yeah, you're not collecting. And you're yeah, then you're, then you're doing it fucking wrong. Um, yeah, Josh, <laughs> Grant, what do you guys want to collect? What's the goal? Uh, I like, I mean, <laughs> I, I've been trying to think, like, I don't think I have like a specific, like one thing that I'd like to have. Like the only thing that ever came to mind is I found once a, I found a first print, like first edition, first print of Alice in Wonderland in the red cover, which they only ever made. I think it was it was a ridiculously known. Like the number that comes to mind is like 150, but I think it was like it was somewhere around there. But yeah, I, I found one for like ten thousand dollars, and I had ten thousand dollars in my bank account at that point in time, and I was like, I could, but that would have been stupid. Like, in, okay, in maybe that's point. why I don't collect things because I'm poor. Yeah, <laughs> I can't, I can't afford it. That doesn't <laughs> help. Yeah, I I would like, uh, I've, and it's something that I'm gonna start doing next year. Like I have down here, like of the, you know, the, the magic, the gathering sort of sets, like I, I've started like mm-hmm. actually organizing them all. So I, I'd like to kind of collect one of every magic the gathering. You're card. just proving that you're not a hoarder by organizing them. hundred percent. Absolutely. <laughs> and like, yeah, my, my housemates, uh, friend back in her hometown, uh, actually like, like legitimately has one of every single Magic the Gathering card in both foil and non-foil. Like he has, he he owned a game store for like 20 years. His son's a professional right. player. Okay, there we go. Like, That's good. There, there is a reason why he has this. So he has the advantage over me. Is like he he had a game store when Magic first came out. He has literally one of every card. Um, and so he has a bit of advantage over me. But yeah, I, I, I would like to organize uh, like a, a, as much as I possibly could of magic. Cause I have, I mean, like grants, I also have quite a few tubs of magic, the gathering everywhere. Like those white boxes down there are full of them. All these boxes are actually full of magic cards as well. And I have, there's probably about twice this many out in the main room. And so, yeah, I, I think I would like to do that, but it is, it is very much a, I would like to not a compulsion to yet. Yeah. So, Excellent. Well, as long as as long as we've got that distinction, yeah. yeah as I will maintain that line of so far, it is not a compulsion to. It's just ah, oh, this would be this would be fun. It'd be a fun challenge. It's just something that I can do, and yeah. you know, figure it out over time. But Look, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd love to collect eighth century Islamic manuscripts because they're beautiful, nice. but. Fuck me, I'm not going to be able to afford that. And <laughs> I, can't, I can't ethically justify having a private collection. You know, I don't believe in private collections of historical artifacts. I think yeah. everything should be publicly accessible. Anyway, fair but fair. like, yeah. Um, Grant, you 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 want anything? Um, <laughs> look, I wouldn't mind a uh, 2002 Legend of the Blue Eyes Dra- Blue Eyes White Dragon uh, Dark Magician, but they cost about eighty five thousand dollars. Jesus, yeah. which is all right. Cool. So uh, let's do a GoFundMe for yeah. that, yeah. Uh, which is insane because yeah, you think like oh, Black Lotus, that's like a hundred k, but the Black Lotus they only made it at one time. They the, yeah. they print Dark Magicians year in year out, and that <laughs> one is still worth eighty five thousand dollars. Why is it like? Oh, super it's just sexy? rare. No, oh. it's just it's just the first one. Like I said, first yeah. edition from the first set. Well, and, I mean, I was. That's like that's like comic books um, and stuff like that. Like having a first edition comic book, um, mm. you know, it's like it costs you financially to store the comic book because it's until it gain, gains that worth. Like it's taking up part of your house and it's actually 
costing you money to house something because it's so low in worth until one day it eventually gains that worth. Like mm. that's that's how people think about like people who have first edition comic books who didn't use them for like wrapping paper or just read them and then give them to a mate or something, you know, like, or just, you know, like oh, I'm moving house, I'll just rip this up and use it to pack the boxes. Like someone actually had to have that set aside in a box somewhere in their house, Life. taking up space. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's, that's something to consider too. Like, would you ever have like, like what's, what's excessive? Like, mm. you know, like if it's costing you money to house your collection or if it's, I guess, yeah. 10,000, eight, Ten thousand dollars is apparently your limit. Um, <laughs> like, what's well, what's the financial thing? Yeah, that's that's how they always sort of like gauge a lot of like uh, like quite the opposite of collecting, like you know, the whole like idea of like Marie Kondo or essentialism or minimalism and stuff like that. Is they always talk about if you actually put a price on something. So it's like people like you know when you're going through your clothes and whatnot, and you think about yourself as like, if I didn't have this, how much would I? be willing to pay for it and if you think oh, i'd pay a couple of bucks like is that you know versus the space in your house is like is it worth taking up the space like a, a sort of like sounds it, like a bloody bargain yeah, yeah. buy that yeah love me, love me an op find no but it's like yeah it's stuff like you know it's you know if i didn't have this how much would i be willing to pay for it and if the if the just if the you know you say oh i i probably wouldn't like if i didn't have it i wouldn't pay for it i like that i have it um but yeah it's very much like that's how they you know train people to get rid of shit but there was a there was an interesting study actually um that i was reading about how uh the these you know science nerds got a whole group of people and split them into two halves and they gave half the people a coffee mug and they said sell it to the other half of the room and like and base it on value and they kind of figured out how much these people were willing to sell it for versus how much people were willing to buy it for and the average price that people were willing to sell for was $5.25. But the average price that people were willing to buy it for was $2.50, which kind of shows it's like we, because we own something, we put more value on it than it's really yeah, worth. Yeah, that's, um, that's the endowment effect. Mm. Um, that's where you, because you own something, it's worth more to you. Yeah, um, 100%. Especially, especially if you have lived experience with it, which you might have from an item of clothing or a particular Magic the Gathering deck or, <laughs> I don't know, your, your pet dog, you know, like maybe. <laughs> Worthless. Pet dogs are, yeah, I was about to say invaluable, but worthless is also, yeah, that's probably um, a way to put it. <laughs> The, the collecting thing just brought to mind a 30 Rock episode where Jack's going to be up in the running to be CEO of the company and he gets like a private investigator to investigate himself to see what dirt they can find on him. And they're like, you know, everything's great except you know what I'm talking about. And they go to like this offsite storage locker and he's got a giant cookie jar collection. And it's like, <laughs> and it turns out he's a cookie jar collector and he's got this huge thing. But like, yeah, having like a dedicated storage garage yeah. full of cookie jars, that's weird. That's, that's I feel like that's hoarding cookie jars. Yeah, it's not yeah. even on display. Um, yeah. yeah. I think, um, do I have the number on the... Cookie jars. The world record so far at the moment is over seven thousand cookie jars in a collection. Um, yeah. Some of them, some of them are double ups though. So you know, that's a lot of cookie that's jars. Cheating. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. Uh, I mean, I do have some numbers on some weird, some weird <laughs> collection. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing is, like, like yeah, I, I think we should probably round out this uh, segment in a second. But I think it'd be funny to to round it up by talking about the the weird collections that we found because, like, I think I can understand weird collections more than probably more sane ones. Cause like I can understand, you know, I found, you know, dudes that like, uh, there was a dude that collected uh, vomit bags from different airlines. He had like over yeah. like, like 2000 vomit bags or something like that from like a like um, 200 different airlines. Oh, is- I've, I've got, I've got the number on that. 6,290. 6,000 vomit <laughs> bags, which is insane. Like it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Like there was the a bloke who had like all these different traffic cones. I'm like, yeah, I can understand yeah, that. The traffic, the, traf- the traffic cone guy has got about 500. Ridiculous. His favorite is a one from 1956, <laughs> uh, Lindale rubber model from Scotland. Oh, uh, the, nice. The person that collected uh, phalluses from different mammals. Um, yeah, that's at um, Iceland's phallus museum. That's um, terrifying. 200, 282 phallus specimens from 93 different species. Um, oh, yeah. And they made a call for donations for a human phallus. And someone answered that call, but they're still alive because he, and he's pledged at post-mortem. So we've got to, <laughs> got to wait waiting. to see if, 
<laughs> but someone yeah. does have over two thousand condoms in the collection. Hmm. I just I wish some of them a musical. We should probably just put a note if there are any children listening. Uh, if you don't know what a phallus is, just go and ask your parents. Be like, mummy, daddy, what's a phallus? And they'll gladly explain for you. Um, no, I like um, I like how that's the time we are asking kids to be like, oh, go tell your parents. And we're just like, fuck shit, cunt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our children, what you need to do is you need to explain someone as distinctly phallic. Yeah. And that'll really concern your parents. 100%. Um, <laughs> okay, here's a collection you might want. Go on. 10,000 different types of hot sauce. That's pretty good. That is my fridge. <laughs> oh, that's that's a good collection. To be honest, that's a that's a like good but but they, it, like that's the question though is are they are they sealed never to be drank? No, nah, just like he, he has like 10,000 different ones that he could just Or choose. do you reckon do you I don't I didn't find out, but like surely you'd buy two and then Drink you'd one, use one and then yeah. or you just keep the empty bottle. I don't know. Because yeah. there is a milk, there's a milk bottle collection of over ten thousand, mm. but they're all empty, luckily. Then, <laughs> and they're filled with um, like he fills them with styrofoam balls. I, I would like those know. Kyles that put all their like their empty alcohol like straight bottles <laughs> on the fridge and keep them for some reason. <laughs> um, I've, there's some there's some weird shit that people collect, like um, uh, Di- dinosaur poo was another one that I saw. Oh, the cop, the coprolites. Um, yep. not just dinosaur, any kind of fossilized poop. Uh, he's got nearly 1300 of them. <laughs> um, okay. Do not disturb signs. 15,000. I need that. That's- <laughs> do you reckon he gets, you can do never reckon- have enough do not disturb. Yeah. Signs. <laughs> do you reckon anyone disturbs him though? Okay. This one. Banana stickers. The fucking stickers that go on bananas. There are over 375 collectors of banana stickers worldwide. That's free um, though, because you don't have to buy the banana. You and can steal that she, off. Just, just the lady who has the most has spent 30 years collecting them, and she has 21,000. Jesus. She needs to work That's... harder. <laughs> right. Are they, is there 21,000 um, unique or? Yeah. 21,000 different banana okay, stickers yeah, around no, that's, the world. That's pretty that's, hectic. That's I thought she scary. just like, she just had 21,000. I mean, you, know, you know, like when after after you leave like a hospital or something and they make you get like the COVID stickers that immediate, like that, that you've checked in and you've had your temperature taken, yeah. then as soon as you leave the hospital, everyone takes the sticker off and sticks it to something outside yeah. the hospital entrance. Um, I've, I've, it's, you know, it's, I just, it's not a collection like that. Like this is an organized <laughs> stickers. 36,000 golf balls. That's a lot. 36,000 golf balls. Um, <laughs> over a thousand Pringles cans. Just That's amazing. That's well that, done. That's my favorite. That's actually my um, favorite. This one, this one makes me angry. A dude has got over 3,000 Monopoly sets and <laughs> most of them are still sealed and unopened because he doesn't really like the game and they're about 80% devalued when you open them. <laughs> I think he's just angry because he's lost all of his friends to Monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and <laughs> umbrella covers. <laughs> so you know, like the sleeves that umbrellas go in. That's, you could visit a you could visit a museum dedicated to them in Maine, in America, and a lady has over seven hundred of them, and she admits she stole some of them from department stores, <laughs> which I was like, right, you should, she's won me back again. I thought it was stupid for a second, but now I'm I'm back to being happy again, and I support this cause. Modern day oh, Robin Hood. 70,000 pieces of Darth Vader memorabilia. Not just not Star Wars, 70,000 pieces of Darth Vader specifically. That's that's, that's boss. That's boss is what that is. That's got to be everything in your house. Darth mm. Vader, every mug in your house got Darth Vader on it. Every plate, every sheet set, every towel, your knickers, all Darth Vader. Um, Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want Darth Vader on these. That sounds cute. Um, and like... You know it to be true, or something written across my ass. <laughs> I'd wear the shit out of that. That's and great. all the bootlegs say, "Luke, I am your father." The, the line that never happened. Yeah, the line that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone starts screaming immediately. Uh-huh. Uh, On that uh, note, unopened, though. unopened Star Wars Lego sets. One more. Two hundred and seventy-two. Right. That's, That's kind of shit. <laughs> That's like, but unopened. I was just. That like, must That's be so all sad. of them. Yeah. yeah, I think it is. But like, defeats the purpose of Lego. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I'd be more impressed if it was fully assembled. Yeah, like or just Star Wars Lego just sets. Even the boxes, like give someone the bricks. Just keep the box. I don't know. Yeah. What a waste. Yeah. Like, uh. I, it's just <laughs> so silly. 
Oh, anyway. But, but that that will actually kind of uh, lead nicely into our final segue. Segue! Because I love a good segue. Uh, every week. Can you animate one of us on a segue to go across <laughs> the screen whenever a <laughs> segue I can, it, I can give it a try. 100% good. Now, every week <laughs> on uh, Balrogs and Blast Beats, we ask a question. Then every Friday, we put the question on the Northside Nerds Instagram and the Northside Nerds TikTok. Uh, the TikTok's starting to go up. The TikTok, like, we only have like a handful TikTok of followers. But it's 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 growing all the time. And so I'm actually, I, we're, we are going to invest more into TikTok. It's a shame I'd never lock on to check it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's, exactly. Some, here's something for the TikTok. Ah, now I tried <laughs> putting my leg up in the air. I played a gig today. It's not fucking happening. Is this one of those new crazes? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an old lady tries your, to lift her leg. <laughs> old lady puts her hip out on TikTok. That's that's the new trend. But we ask a question, and then, dear listener, you get to let us know uh, what you would pick, what we would choose. Uh, so this week, the question, uh, the topic is: cast yourself. Who would you play in the Star Wars universe? Grant, let's start with oh. you. Cast yourself. K two S O because I run. Purely on sarcasm, <laughs> and I just couldn't think of anyone else. I've even I've even got a little bobblehead that's with me at all times. The K two S O from my favorite Aww. Star Wars film, Rogue One. Rogue One. I actually haven't even watched uh, Andor yet, so I'm keen to get onto that. I don't know if he's in there, but Ooh, I hope he is. Not yet. Ah, uh, that's oh, all right. I've ruined, I've ruined everything. Fuck. I mean, I know he dies. Spoiler so, like, alert! <laughs> Spoiler alert! Whoa! I, whoa! I mean, actually, um, no, but Margie, you might be wrong there, but we won't go into that. Um, oh, I mean, we don't know. You yeah, know, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, Grant, I actually had you pegged as a a pub person. You know, like they walk walk into a pub in Star Wars and <laughs> like or whatever they people. call it, a canteen or whatever it is. Yeah. Are you one of the people who's like hunched over a beer and you're like, look up, you know, you got your hair out and you're like, you look up and you leer at them for a what second. What about some desks? <laughs> yeah, no, then, then you go back to being like mysterious and tough looking. I don't know, like whatever people do. But that's what I had you pegged as. Uh, Fair. An extra. Fair. I appreciate it. <laughs> Maggie, what about I'm not saying you don't join the mission. I'm just saying that's your first scene. That's how I see it. Yeah. Maggie, what about you though? Uh cast yourself in Star Wars. I mean, this is really hard. It's like I'd want to do like my favorite character, Ahsoka, because she's amazing. Or to be a female Jedi just because there's not enough female Jedi and they're great. But I'd probably be one of those rebels with the really big helmets who are in the tower with like the landing sticks yeah. <laughs> who are guiding the spaceships to land on a huge landing pad. Spaceships that are equipped with fucking light speed navigational capacity do not need Boop, boop, like little hand wavy batons, <laughs> or I'd be, or you'd see me as one of those people on Alderaan, like Dust. their faces, their faces <laughs> lighting up with the glow of being blown up. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine myself one of those real big helmets, just being <laughs> absolutely fucking useless, like probably just <laughs> dancing, like, ooh, ooh, like I mean. <clears throat> rebels <laughs> like, <laughs> like just shit uh josh do you want to hear what i've cast you as first please i, I want to know what you've cast me as okay so you'd be you'd be an x-wing pilot for the rebels obviously and instead of being like this is red three you'd be red red beard um because that would be the name of your x-wing yep. and you're gonna die in an explosion going they're on my tail i can't get them off ah wilhelm scream explosion <laughs> Red beard flies everywhere. Like your beard's on your beard's on fire, and you're like, ah, and then you blow up, and that's that's how I've cast you. <laughs> I mean, like, you're not entirely wrong for where I would go with it. So I thought about like I'd like I'd like to be like like I think it'd be fun to be like Admiral Akbar. I'd really just like to say it's a trap. <laughs> I, th I think you'd look really good in an X-Wing rebel yeah. helmet, personally. Yeah. Or like, Grant, I had K2SO as well because I'd like to be sarcasm, but then my brain went a bit meta with um, it. R2-D2 is the most sarcastic out of everyone <laughs> on Star true. Wars. Duh. True. I, I went a bit meta with it and realized that like, I'd just, I'd just be really happy to be there. So I was like, I think I'd just go even the Daniel Craig approach and just be a uh, like a stormtrooper. Like, I'd just be like, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. So I think like a rebel pilot as well. I'm just happy to be here. If I had a line, sick. But like, yeah, I was like, I like even as an Ewok, I was like trying to think. I, was like, I would just like to be anything. Like, is it, like as long as it wasn't like I, I would want to be fucking be like Bib Fortuna or something like that. Because <laughs> fuck that guy. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I was just like, I'd, I'd just be so happy to be there. That I'd just be like, yeah, just honestly, put, 
put me in a stormtrooper helmet at like the back of the garrison and i'd be like hey, that's me i'm there that's i mean i'm in star wars that's i'm in star wars now and so uh but yeah so i i think like we'll go actually mikey we'll go with yours i'll be the i'll be the rebel pilot that gets shot you're, down. you're a rebel pilot red red beard checking yeah. in it's yeah. it's not red beard it's red red beard it's, yeah. you gotta get it's like, have you po- <laughs> seen the list of people who have been stormtroopers no all right so we got daniel craig Prince Harry, Prince William, Jason Sudeikis, Ed Sheeran, Stephen Colbert, Ben <laughs> Schwartz, Carl Urban, Adam Pally, Tom Hardy, Kevin Smith. And Amazing. Wait, all of these people have actually been stormtroopers. Yeah, cameoed as stormtroopers. I, like, I knew Daniel Craig because he's in the, the bondage scene. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's in the the what scene? There's a, the the meme about how like when when Ray's tied up and she's like loosen my restraints. So there's a meme that's just like tighten my restraints and close the door. <laughs> like the, when she's like loosen my restraints, that's like Daniel Craig is that stormtrooper. Um, oh my god! Yeah, I, I didn't know any of the other ones. I fucking Prince Harry and which ones were the princes? I want to know. Which I, they, they were both. They were in the Last Jedi, but they got cut. <laughs> Ah, uh, boo. <laughs> Imagine good. cutting the, like, the royal family. Yeah. Like, ah, sorry. You know Not much of a royalist myself. I'm more about a, re- I'm more about a republic. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, did I didn't even know. I didn't know that uh, Carl Urban was one. Apparently in Rise of Skywalker, he just simply says Knights of Ren as Kylo walks past. <laughs> That's his line. Amazing. Amazing. He just says Knights of Ren. Sick. Oh, like. Tom Hardy was also in The Last Jedi in the same scene as Prince Harry and Prince William. <laughs> and that was also cut. Now, did, that's, did, that's a deleted scene, I want to say. We need to find out how, like, I, I need, I'm going to go and look it up after this, obviously, but I need to know how that happened. I need to know the story oh, yeah. of how, how they ended up. In, yeah. Like, do they just call Kathleen Kennedy and just be like, yo, the princes want to be in a Star Wars? And she's just like, all right. Like, yeah, 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 something like that. Like it, like, but like, yeah, it's just uh, it's funny as fuck. But, yeah. dear, but, dear listener, we need to know who would you cast yourself as in a, a Star Wars film? Which character would you cast would us? Be, who would you cast us as? Let us know in the comments. Uh, if you think I'd be Chewbacca, well, that's just a low blow, and I'm not going for it. I thought it was too easy, <laughs> so I didn't say it at all. Uh, but uh, yeah, let us know. Follow Northside Nerds on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, on Facebook, and uh, every Friday we post a question, and uh, you. If someone can draw, I would love to be drawn with one of those big rebel helmets, um, with my <laughs> little directing sticks. I'd like to see Josh in his little pilots thing, yeah. and I'd like to see I'd like to see Grant as a robot, just or a Jawa. So no, that's an easy draw as well because you don't even have to draw me; just draw a Jawa and just You're say just it's me. That's great. I fucking love Jawas. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, who knows? I might come and, like, steal something from your car and sell it back to you, but whatever, you know. <laughs> them's the rules. Just you underneath someone's car, just... <laughs> put put it on bricks. And like, oh, you want to buy some wheels? <laughs> <laughs> but, dear listener, let us know. Uh, leave a rating review. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, yeah, if you're watching, uh, if you're listening on Spotify, you can rate on Spotify. Every little bit helps. Tell someone about us. And, uh, yeah. Tell your kids about phalluses. Mm. Talk to your kids about mm. before it's too late. <laughs> before it's too late. Yeah. 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 Shit, fuck, cunt, phallus. Yeah. Uh, that could be how they find out. Yeah. If you if you haven't and we've just told them about phalluses, well, you're welcome. That's oh, what we hear. Apparently, I'm their, also, I'm their dad now. <laughs> out of the three of us, I'm clearly the daddy. Um, That's true. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not even going to try and argue that one. You're the one that keeps on saying that people can get it. So, it's a- <laughs> <laughs> that was my best sound person. Sure Macho much man, Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've, I should have said Tuscan Raider. Fuck, I do make a real good. <gasps> <laughs> We're gonna cancel this podcast now. It's gone now. It's over. It's ruined. It's ruined forever. In uh, hashtag Northside Nerds, Margie's gross. <laughs> I wasn't even meant to be sexual. I just make good noises. <laughs> <laughs>